Welcome, welcome to the Sovereign CEO Podcast. We talk about how to create location-independent income, live an international lifestyle if that's what you want. Move to another country, escape your collapsing Western country, or at least set up an international backup plan and do all those things for very little money. I am Caleb Jones. Today, let's talk about predictions for the world because this is something that comes up a lot. If you have read my blogs <clears throat> when I was a hardcore blogger years ago for many, 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 many years, I made many, 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 many predictions. I made even predictions before that when I was a professional speaker before I started blogging. The vast majority of the predictions I have made have been accurate. The vast majority of the predictions I have made that were not at where I was wrong, it still happened. It just happened at a different date than I thought it would happen, which is kind of the focus of this podcast today in terms of people who make predictions and are wrong all the time. I'll give you some specific, specific examples and what predictions make sense and what predictions don't. So... I predicted a lot of things. Um, I predicted the war in Ukraine. Uh, I, when COVID hit, I did an entire analysis on COVID. You can watch the COVID video I did of the aftermath. I pre every single thing I said, I said about 27 things. One thing was wrong. All the other 26 were accurate when everyone else was wrong about COVID. I, I predicted COVID 99% accurately. I predicted Trump. Not only that he got elected... But when he got elected, he wouldn't change anything. I did a whole video on that. I've done several articles on that. Even when people were saying during 2016, Hillary's got it. Hillary's got it. I said, no, you're wrong. Trump has at least a 40% chance of winning. And 40% is good. If you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, 40% is good. That's a good shot. 40% chance you get, the, you get the, uh, the chest full of gold. Oh, I'll take that. 40%, I'll do it. Okay? At least 40%. I said that all year, 2016. You can go to my blogs and look. They're all still there. I said, no, 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 there's no way. The reason I knew that is because of a prediction I got wrong. Oh, here's some, well, let me, let me backtrack. The reason I knew this was about a prediction I got wrong regarding a presidential election were Obama's re-election when he ran against Mitt Romney in 2012. So prior to 2012, I accurately predicted every presidential election starting from 1988 all the way to 2012. Every Single one, 100% accurate, I predicted. Starting all the way back with Bush v. Uh, Dukakis when I was in high school. I predicted that a year in advance. I predicted Bill Clinton winning in 1992 two or three years in advance, over two years in advance, when they first did the Democrat caucus debates. When you had eight or nine Democrats all running for you know the nomination and all these old men, and Bill Clinton was sitting there. This is like 1990, okay? 91? And all these old stupid Democrats, rah, 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 rah. and Bill Clinton said, well, what we should do is we should do this. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, that's our next president. He's a lying, slimy piece of shit, and he is going to win in a landslide. No one can defeat that guy. He's going to fucking win. And I was right. Okay? Bill Clinton getting over to Bob Dole. I mean, you go through every election. The George Bush uh, Al Gore, where it was literally within 500 votes of that. I said, Bush is going to win. I said, he's not going to win by much. But he's going to win. He's barely win, but he's going to win. I was right. Okay, now, I was wrong in 2012. And some of my haters at the time said, ah, you're wrong. You, you're, all your predictions suck. No, 80 plus percent are right. Every once in a while makes something wrong. No one can be right 100% of the time. <clears throat> but I was wrong. I said Mitt Romney would win. Because, by all standard measurements, he should have won. Never in my lifetime, my adult lifetime, had a president be reelected in the middle of a shitty economy. If there's a shitty economy and there's a presidential election, the president loses, and the other guy wins, no matter how bad the other guy is. And Mitt Romney didn't make any major gaffes. <clears throat> he said some things people didn't like on the left, but that's normal. He didn't make any major gaffes. He looked the part. Compared to the typical stupid brainwashed voter, he should have won. He didn't win. Not to, now, in my defense, as I analyzed the time, he lost to Barack Obama by 1.6% in three states. So he did lose, but he lost by this, a smidge. I was, I was not like I was completely wrong. So why was I wrong? I didn't understand how psychotic the typical American voter had become. Now, there have always been irrational voters. <clears throat> but starting around 2010, which is when the, the right wing in the United States officially lost the culture war, you right wingers, you think you're still fighting the culture war because you're insane. <clears throat> I've told you guys are like the... Uh, Japanese soldiers from World War II they found in the islands in the 60s thinking that World War II was still going on. 
Those are you right-wingers. You think you're still fighting the culture war. No, you're not. You lost the culture war around Obama's first, second term around circa 2010. And when that happened, a number of things occurred. One thing that occurred was that right-wingers went insane. And then left-wingers went more woke. So left-wingers went more insane. The left has always been insane. They went more insane. The right went insane. Around 2010, somewhere around, 2011, somewhere there. <clears throat> so now voters were hyper-irrational. And they voted for Obama, who was fucking terrible. Now, every president, last five presidents have been terrible. Biden's terrible. Trump was terrible. If you don't believe that, go watch the analysis video I did on Trump. He changed nothing. He didn't move even 1% on the dial of preventing collapse. Obama was terrible. Bush was terrible. Clinton was reasonably terrible. There's five terrible, ridiculous presidents in a row, and we have a lot more coming before the eventual collapse of the United States. So I knew, with these irrational voters, I knew in 2016, people said, Trump can't win. He's, he's on a debate talking about his penis. There's no way I said, you don't understand what America's like now. Trump could very easily win. They like, Americans like that shit now. Yes, 10 years ago, he would have never won. Now, when Americans have got that loopy, yeah. All these Trumps were like, build a wall, build a wall, build a wall. He better build the fucking wall, build a wall, build a wall. He gets into office. He doesn't build the wall. He actually signs a bill that says he won't build the wall. He promises not to. And all the Trumps were like, well, I don't care if he builds a wall. Okay, because they're insane. Trump supporters are not rational actors. Neither are Bernie Sanders supporters, hardcore Democrats. Okay, it's, it's irrational across the board. It's one of the main reasons I left the United States. So here's the thing. Oh, oh, let me throw another data point on there before I get to my point. I predicted the 2008 economic crash. However, I predicted it would happen in 2012. So I was four years off. It still happened. This is why in the early to mid-2000s, when everyone was buying real estate, I said, you guys are idiots. You're stupid. There's a bubble. You're going to get fucked. You buy real estate in 2005, 2006, 2000. Terrible idea. I bought gold. And while everyone fucking lost their asses in 2008, I made mountains of money. From 2000, 2000, that whole decade, I made mountains of money in gold. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I wrote about my, one of my books. I made so much money in my gold investments, it funded my entire divorce because my divorce happened in 2007. Lawyers, moving out, getting a second apartment for a while, that all cost a lot of money. And I had some money, but not a lot. But I made so much money in my gold investments because I knew the crash was coming, cashed in. Uh, I have said before, because of my ability to predict things, and I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty good, this is a true stat for my life. I have never lost money in any calendar year in my investment portfolio in my entire life. And I am the only man that I know who has investment assets who can make that statement. Every other guy who has some... <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over cold. Investment assets has lost money various times throughout his life. Negative return for even a year. I've never... Now, I've had years where it was like a 2% return. I've had that. I One year was a 1% return. But I didn't lose money. Well, kid, we lost money because inflation is 3%. Okay, fine. You can nitpick it. But I didn't lose money in terms of real dollars. And I've had years where I made, like in 2020, when everyone was pissed off and it was worse than your life, I doubled my portfolio. 140% return. Okay? And the reason I'm able to do that, not because I'm an investment genie, genius, is I'm able to predict things. Now, so what did I learn from all these experiences? What I've learned is you cannot predict. You can predict what happens. You cannot predict when they happen. You can't. So, I have said many times, and I'm going to be right, the United States is going to collapse in our lifetimes. What does collapse mean, Caleb? Watch my other video. I lay out six different scenarios for what the collapse will look like. It's one of six different scenarios. My guess would be hyperinflation, but there's five other scenarios that are possible, including deflation. I don't know. And there's my point. I'm not going to sit here and say, America's going to collapse next year, October in 2024, and it's going to collapse because of this. That is stupid. And anyone who says that, is either lying, stupid, or trying to sell you something. Let me say that again. I've said this before. Anyone who makes specific predictions with specific dates or time frames is either lying, for whatever reason, stupid, a lot of that going around, or trying to sell you something, a lot of that going around too. Even I, who sell Five Flags products to help you escape the collapsing West, do not say America's going to collapse, guys, in 2025. You got two more years left. You better buy my products. I don't do that. When I could financially benefit, I don't. It's dishonest and it's stupid. So that brings me to people who do make specific predictions. I love Doug Casey. Love him to death. I love uh, Peter Schiff. Love him to death. These are great guys. Like him a lot. 
The problem with these two guys, and this is nothing new, I've mentioned this before. By the way, I have met both these guys. I know these, I don't know them like buddies, but I've met both of them several, talked to them several times in Freedom Fest events, <clears throat> both of them. Both these guys have been guilty of saying the economy is going to collapse next November. And they give you a date. Not a date in the calendar, but like a month or a six-month span. And then next November comes, everything's fine. Oops. They don't do what I do. They say, look, this is going to happen. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but it'll happen in the next several years. I don't know when. That would be more accurate and more honest. They've both been guilty of this. I have noticed that Doug Casey has backed off on this. I haven't followed Peter in a while. Um, so I know Doug Casey does this less than he used to, maybe because he's older and wiser, I'm not sure. But a lot of these doom and gloom guys are like, oh yeah, America's going to collapse next year, guys. Get ready. Buy your gold. Hurry up. No. No. By the way, I don't think America's going to collapse next year. The odds are, are against it. The dollar is a pretty strong, it's, the, it's a bullshit currency, but compared to other currencies, it's the least bad turd in the pile, and it's going to be hard to knock off the dollar. It will happen in our lifetimes, but our lifetimes could be five years from now, 30 years from now. I don't think it'll be 30. COVID knocked 10 years off the lifespan of the United States. We spent the United States, my God, the United States, under, mostly under Donald Trump, spent $16 trillion on COVID and got nothing for it. That's going to knock off at least 10 years off the lifespan of the United States. I said that time, I, I will double down on that. I still don't know when it will collapse, but it will. Peter Zihan, who I respect, I think is a good person and very smart. However, I think he's very biased. I've talked about why he's biased. I've done two videos on Peter Zihan. Go on my Sovereign CEO channel, YouTube channel, you watch those videos. He has said things like, China will collapse in seven years. He gives a date, 2030. That's stupid. No, it won't. Even if you think China's in trouble, and they have a lot of problems, China's doing a lot of things wrong. I've talked about China. I'm not, I, don't, I don't defend China. China lot, used to do a lot of things right. As of 2019, China went insane. They went from a very intelligent, evil, but very smart and very crafty oligarchy to a, a completely insane dictatorship where this dictator is doing whatever he wants. It's turning into like North Korea. Not literally, but in that it's a crazy dictator and people just worship at this crazy dictator's feet. It's amazing. They did a lot of things wrong. They're going to have a lot of problems. Yes, demographic problems. Well, Caleb, they're going to collapse to the demographics. Japan's had a demographic problem of 30 years. Did they collapse? No. Now, Japan is collapsing. Japan is the only Asian country that is collapsing because of demographics. That's true. But did it collapse? Did Japan collapse in 2010 like so many people did? No. So Peter Zion in 2003 is going to look stupid. Now, here's the thing. Back in 2010, Peter Zion predicted that China would collapse in 2020. Oops. This is what happens. You make specific predictions based on specific dates. Not smart. Don't do that. And if you see people doing that, you immediately need to, your bullshit radar needs to go on full alert. As soon as I see someone make predictions with exact dates, I know I'm listening to someone who is either lying to me for whatever reason, just plain out fucking stupid, or trying to sell me something. Peter Zihan is, by the way, trying to sell you something. He's not trying to sell you something. He's trying to sell someone else something. Go watch my videos. There you go. This is why I don't do this. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't put on, my, put on my code. I can't say what I know is untrue. I can avoid to answer questions. I can be sarcastic. I can say I'm not answering that question. That's not lying. But I cannot verbally say to you something that I know is untrue. So I can't lie. I'm not stupid. I am selling a lot of stuff. But I want to have a level of integrity where I have a long-term relationship with you where you can trust me instead of just making a bunch of money on some courses or whatever and then I go out of business because no one buys my stuff because I'm lying all the time. I have a long-term objective for this Alpha Male 2.0 and Sovereign CEO content. Okay? <clears throat> Does that mean I'm perfect? No. Does that mean every prediction I make is going to be accurate? No. No. But I'm going to be much more accurate than I have been than a lot of these people who make specific predictions with specific dates. So that's the gauge in which you can tell if someone is giving you specific dates versus saying this is going to happen at some point in this very broad time frame. I say America will collapse in our lifetimes. That could be another decade or two. I don't think it'll be a decade or two. Could be. It could. It could be 20 years. No problem. It could. I don't give you a date because I don't know. And I get people asking, Caleb, when is it going to collapse? When is Germany going to collapse? I don't know. Soon. In our lifetimes. Make sense? So food for thought next time you hear anyone predict anything, either something good or something bad, they don't fucking know. If they attach dates to it, that should be an immediate red flag for you if they attach any dates. If they don't attach dates... They're more likely to be right than you can analyze. Cool? Cool. See you next podcast. Bye.